Welcome to the Banega Swasth India podcast. Our focus is on creating a holistic and healthy India for each and every one. Our goal is one world hygiene, where citizens, individuals, society and governments work together to ensure health for all and foster global unity for a healthier tomorrow. It's an air pollution emergency that the national capital and the neighboring cities and states are facing currently. Experts say that the quality of the air people are inhaling is equivalent to smoking 25 to 30 cigarettes a day. As Delhi chokes on the toxic haze with air quality in the severe category, we speak with Dr. Sachin D, consultant interventional pulmonology, critical care and sleep medicine from Fortis Hospital on the health hazards and how we can protect ourselves from the harmful effects of air pollution. Thank you so much uh, Dr. Sachin for joining us. Thank you. Dr. Sachin, according to this year's air quality life index compiled by the University of Chicago's Energy Policy Institute, the people in Delhi could have their lives shortened by 11.9 years due to the poor air they breathe. Now, if you can list down some of the health implications that are associated with such high level of air pollution. The Chicago study which was published in August plus 23 it clearly says that overall on an average in india people are losing 4 to 5 years of their life because of air pollution and when it comes to the delhi and the northern parts of india people are losing approximately 11.9 years so near to 12 years of their life expectancy people are losing if the air pollution stays like this for long so this is something which we need to address immediately and there are studies which also show that if we improve the air quality then the life expectancy goes up the bl- classical example for this is the chinese study so the chinese people from 2013 have put a lot of effort to improve their air quality and that has rather related in increasing their life expectancy by 2.2 years but here we only speak about the life expectancy but what about the quality of life nobody speaks about it so just looking at the life expectancy is not something which is important we should also look into account the quality of life of an individual a person who stays for 80 years but who stays till 80 years of age by continuously coughing every time is not a good quality of life for him yeah. so that is something which we also need to look into and when we look into the health effects of air pollution i think we classify them as short term effects and long term effects the short term or the immediate effects is when you go outside in a polluted environment what you get is the burning eyes running nose soreness in the throat suffocation chest congestion coughing and even you know you may try to feel that you know it i am kind of claustrophobic so people feel that you know they are kind of chest is very tight when they go into a air polluted environment but what we are more rather worried about is the long term effects the long term effects is they cause a significant impact especially on those who have underlying asthma copd chronic bronchitis so these patients can have frequent attacks persistent cough we all see this you know previously whenever the viral fever used to come they used to have a sore throat it used to go off within 5 to 7 days but now i think the people keep coughing for more than 1 month 2 months yeah. etc so these are the impacts of air pollution on the body it doesn't just affect the lungs but it also have extra pulmonary effects these fine particles which we call as particulate matter pm 2.5 it goes into the various circulatory systems to cause anemia heart attacks strokes dementia loss of memory parkinsons alzheimers infertility birth related issues and a variety of cancers including lung cancers and even diabetes for that matter so all these issues has to be addressed and i think uh, that is the impact of air pollution on a body as a whole now we know the situation but what how can we keep ourselves healthy and protected yeah to understand this effects of air pollution we think i think we should all know about what is the as pm 2.5 the particulate matter 2.5 it's the fine fraction of carbon particle that is suspended in the air it has got a lot of other chemicals metals ingredients in it which we inhale and it can reach the various parts of the body the who has given a standard here as to what should be the cut off of pm 2.5 and rather when we look into it the average cut off is nearly 5 microgram per cubic uh, meter so what we are actually inhaling on an average in india is nearly 40 and what people are inhaling in northern parts of india especially in the indo gangetic plain it goes to around 126 mm-hmm. 
the limit is 5 and we are inhaling 126 this is a very gross mismatch what is happening mm. so these pm 2.5 particles they enter into the blood stream and cause various effects by causing oxidative stress and damage at various levels of the body not just in the heart not just in the brain it even causes an oxidative stress in the pancreas in the ops, uh, especially the pregnant ladies. You know, we have some viewer questions. I would like to take some of those before I continue with my questions, Dr. Sachin. Payal Ghelot wants to know, how do we keep newborns and expecting mothers safe from air pollution? The pregnant ladies can have low birth weight babies, premature deliveries, infertilities, abortion. So all these things can be attributed to this air pollution, the PM 2.5. Newborn babies, there is a very clear study which actually says that, you know, the lung growth of the newborn babies is definitely affected by air pollution so the study actually what it did was you know it evaluated the lung capacity of the children who are growing in a high aqi area versus those who are growing in a low aqi area and they found out that the overall lung capacity was much lower in those children who were in a highly polluted environment compared to those who are in a good environment so it basically means that the lung which is still in the growing phase in the childhood for the newborns to 18 years of age is significantly impacted by the air pollution. So the lung growth and development gets affected. So this is something wherein we need to take care of the newborn babies and the children, especially for these two, three months. Don't let them go outside. Avoid taking them outside. Even if you're taking them, try to wear a mask for yourself as well as your kid when you're taking them outside. And preferably, if you're taking them, go inside a closed environment, like in case, or you know, an AC car, probably an AC vehicle, wherein, you know, the exposure can be minimalized to a significant extent. The next uh, question is from Vishali Kapila. Uh, she's asking, what are some of the steps that people should take to bid uh, in bid to protect themselves from toxic air pollution, indoor air pollution. So I think what Vishali wants to know is how can one protect themselves when they're inside from the toxic pollution? So indoor air pollution is mainly caused by, you know, the burning of this chula and the smoke. And in certain high and affluent societies, it is the smoking. Smoking indoors is the one of the important uh, cause of air pollution. Apart from this, you know, we use a lot of cleaning agents, disinfecting agents to routinely clean our surfaces, routinely clean the floors, toilets, etc. The smoke and the smog that is produced from these agents also is equally hazardous as compared to the air quality outside. So even the furniture, the carpenting, that work that you're doing indoors, a lot of fungus will be there indoors. So all these will contribute to a significant indoor air pollution. So when we speak about indoor air pollution, a lot of people do a lot of things to curtail it. But the only things that have actually proven that they are effective is proper cleaning and keeping your uh, indoors dust free. That is one thing. Second is during a high AQI season, try to keep your doors and windows closed. Okay. Use an air conditioner and use an air purifier, preferably if you have it. And ideally, you have to use an air purifier with both adsorbing and absorbing capacity. That is, it should have an HEPA filter as well as a carbon filter so that it will take care of both the PM 2.5 and the toxic gases that are produced indoors. So they are being absorbed from such air purifiers. Okay. So a judicious use of these things is important. And one question which I usually get from my patients is, do indoor plants help to curtail yes. indoor air pollution? The study, there is a very clear study for this. The indoor plants, rather depressing to note, does not help us in reducing indoor air pollution. And mm -hmm. in the contrary of that, the study also says that if you are using indoor plants, the amount of the pollens and the amount of the fungal spores in the environment inside the home is much higher. Oh, so it is very dangerous for the asthmatics and those who have these allergic conditions to keep a lot of indoor plants thinking that they are safe for you, they are safe for reducing your indoor air quality. No, it does not work. I think that's a very valid point which you brought out because one reads a lot, one sees a lot of, you know, which plants should one be getting in. But thank you for clarifying that. Just a last question, Dr. Sachin. Are we seeing a spike in the number of patients complaining about breathing issues, asthma, air pollution related problems in hospitals currently? Is that, do you see that? And what will be some of the immediate care such patients should undertake in order to avoid going out? So definitely we are seeing a spike in the number of admissions, the number of emergency visits from the patients, especially mm -hmm. who have already asthma or a chronic bronchitis. 
so these people are coming with an acute exacerbations what we call as an acute attacks which is attributable to the air pollution and at least 15 to 30% of surge in the number of such admissions we are seeing currently because we can attribute it to this air pollution mm. so these people we always advise them to stay indoors during the next 2 to 3 months this winter season is not just the air pollution season it's also the season for viral infections mm. so viral infections they combine with the smog and the attribute is literally double fold so that is going to have a significant impact on these people and therefore we ask them to stay indoors as a, as much as possible for the next 2 months second vaccination vaccination against flu and pneumococcal if you have these chronic lung or cardiac diseases take the vaccinations in conjunction with your doctor's advice okay thank you so much dr sachin for speaking with us and sharing your expertise with us and our viewers thank you so much it was a pleasure to speak with you well that's it on the banegas first india podcast this week if you have comments queries or suggestions on the topic we discussed today or issues you would like us to cover in future do write to us on bsi podcast at the rate hindi.tv.com Remember BSI stands for Banega Swast India. You can also connect with us on Banega Swast India handles on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and continue the conversation through the week. Till next week, this is Ambika Singh Kama signing off. Stay healthy and stay safe.